when we give words of, when you have words of knowledge after a while or this afternoon, and then you're going to get to pray for the people who have the condition that you called out. I'm going to ask that you try to pray using this model. Now, it's not the only way to pray. You know, God has great diversity. But the point is, I think of it not so much as a five-step prayer model as much as this, a natural way to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. It's doing ministry. We labor together. We're co-laborers with Christ. It's that co-laboring thing. It's, it's an approach to ministry where it's just, it's, it really is not so much you doing something as much as you working with God, Jesus through the Holy Spirit to minister. And we want to show you how to do that naturally. And there's a natural progression in a, in a, in a conversation. So, five-step prayer model. Here's what, you, here's what they are. Interview. Diagnosis. Prayer selection. Pray for effect. Post-prayer suggestion. Interview. Diagnosis. Prayer selection, pray for effect, post-prayer suggestion. Now, there's one little caveat in there I want to add. In the prayer for effect, which would be uh, the fourth phase, uh, it's off, you should, not often, every time really, you should, after you've prayed, uh, re-interview and find out what's going on and bless it. Pray more or thank God that it's done. Just not walk off. Because sometimes what they tell you will be the key to seeing a major breakthrough in how to pray if it's not done yet, not completed. So now let's go through it. Um, I'll try this real quick. Um, and, then we, and then I think I'll, I think I'll pick somebody and we'll just then do it. Um, in the interview, you ask things like, uh, you know, you, you want this to be real personal. I tell people, I don't, in my teams, I don't expect you to heal anybody. God's the healer, but I do expect you to love the people you minister to and honor them. And the way you minister to them is very important because we want to model a culture of honor. Honor um, draws pr- the presence of God. Um, and I've seen some people minister to people like they were cattle in a chute. I've seen people minister to people like they're only they're what they're excited about is to know that they get a story to tell, rather than loving that person. So you never lose sight that the, one of the great privileges you have is to treat this person the way Jesus would, in love and respect. So one of the things is, what's your name? Now, if you're at your own church, you know that. But if you're out in a crusade or you're somewhere else, uh, you may not. Uh, if you're with us on the a team somewhere, you, you won't know their name. What's your, what's your first name? Uh, how long you had this? Uh, any trauma in your life, especially within the, the last year? And it may have been even farther back than that, but it's usually, often, it will be within the last year. Um, um, and, and you say, you know, if you have to think, if they have to really look for it, you know, it's probably not. Usually, they'll, yes, there is, real quick. Uh, um, how long have you had it? Uh, is there any, what's the doctor say? Do you have a diagnosis for it? Does it run in the family? Does anybody else have this? Um, and what you're looking for in the, in the interview is keys to the root of the cause of the sickness. Because if you don't deal with the root, it's like cutting dandelions off in your yard. They grow back. That's why some people lose their healing. They did get healed of the condition they had and the symptoms, but those symptoms were coming from another root. And so in, in the, and the other thing while you're praying and interviewing, I tell them, um, I don't want you to pray while I'm praying for you. I want you to pay attention to your body. And I want you to tell me if you begin to feel anything. 50% of the people I pray for, they get healed. They feel heat or energy, electricity, wind, cold. Anything different, tell me. If it gets better, gets worse, moves, tell me. Because if it gets 
worse when I pray or moves is probably an afflicting spirit. Um, and, and don't be afraid if it happens because if you spot them, you got them. And uh, uh, we have authority over that. Uh, because some people are afraid. They don't know why. I got, when I get prayed for, I get worse. Man, that's usually the cause. Um, and, I, and, I, and I tell them, um, I, if you feel something, interrupt me, even while I'm praying. Now, a lot of people won't. So even after you get done, stop for a while and say, what's happening? Because a lot of people, no matter how often you tell them, tell me, it's important, tell me if you begin to feel anything. I prayed for one person. It's happened a lot, actually. But I'm praying. I've got a line of people, and I'm praying for somebody. Didn't pray long. I mean, you know, I think five minutes is a long time before you stop and ask. So I, I prayed for a while and stopped. I said, what's happening? And they said, the moment you start praying, I was healed. <laughs> now, I have a line that go from here to the back of the church. I need every moment spared so to get to the next one. What if I'd prayed 10 minutes, you know? And pray with your eyes open. While you're praying for the sick. Now, when you, you know, any other time you pray, pray any way you want. But it really is good to pray with your eyes open when you're praying for the sick. Because often when you're praying, you, you can see things, how their body reacts to something you prayed. It can be a key, a clue. That's an area that you need to pray more into. Or uh, if you learn that certain signs. And by the way, I also tell them 50% feel something, 50% that get healed, don't feel anything. They just get healed. And about 10 or 15% of those don't get healed in the meeting. They get healed in the next day or two. So our faith isn't in whether or not you have any manifestations or you feel anything. Our faith is in um, the promises of God. But though our faith isn't in whether or not you feel anything, if you do, it increases my faith. And if you do the interview, there may be three or four things wrong with them. Well, what do you pray for first? That's when you stop and say, well, anything happening? Maybe they got a shoulder pain and a knee pain and a belly ache. Anything happening? Yeah, my knee feels hot. Well, I don't pray anymore for the belly and, and the shoulder for a while. I'm praying for that knee because that's where God started. You're working with God. You're cooperating. You're blessing what he's doing. Then when that gets healed, then says, Lord, we ask, come, more. You know, we, we bless the stomach. We bless the shoulder. Anything happening? Yeah, I feeling something in my shoulder now. I'll pray for the shoulder. See, it's, it's following much of our prayer is telling God what to do rather than seeing what he's doing and, cooper- and, and, and working with him rather than, than him, you know, it works better that way. Take it from me. I know. It works much better, you know, rather than just pushing through and what we're wanting to see with our agenda it's, it's uh, becoming sensitive to the Holy Spirit and learning how to recognize or teach others to recognize what's happening. Um, so, I, and, and the other thing is you're praying. Sometimes I tell them, you know, I'm praying whether I'm talking or not. As long as my, and I, you know, if, if it's appropriate, I put my hand on it. If it's a woman, as long as I can I touch you, is it okay? Uh, because especially if they've been abused, uh, they, it's really, really important to them that you don't, touch them without them giving you permission or they may say I feel a little uncomfortable because we don't want to feel uncomfortable you know just put your finger out half an inch from their head or something they don't want to be touched so uh, I don't want their faith to be in the phenomena but I want them to be aware that if the phenomena does occur it's a good sign all right so that's the interview and then after the interview you make a prayer selection the prayer selection is if I was praying and the pain got worse or moved, I'm, oh, I've got an afflicting spirit. Or if I'm interviewing, they say, well, it gets worse when I come to church. Oh, probably an afflicting spirit. Um, um, if I'm, if I, during the interview, they, they said, yes, this began after my husband ran off with another woman or after my boss accused me of, of something I didn't do and fired me and now I've lost my family, lost my home. You know, tr- these traumatic type things. And I found out that, yes, this did happen. And how long did it happen? Well, this happened, you know, a few months later, a few weeks later, or maybe, you know, sometime later. There's a probability that this could be a psychosomatic illness, which means that um, because we haven't responded to things in our life, biblically speaking, 
according to the counsel of the word. We have not responded with forgiveness. We have not responded with grace. We have not responded with releasing it. And we were, instead, we're bitter and we're angry and have resentment. Then, um, or, or we were abused emotionally and we have all this negative stuff in our tapes in our mind about how we're of little value. And, and it almost, uh, we have uh, been so mind brainwashed and abused emotionally that we feel that we're guilty uh, for something that was done to us by somebody else. And, and, or we have, have little value and have no worth and uh, God wouldn't heal me because I'm I'm so unworthy and I'm just I'm just trash. I'm just I'm, I, Dad said I'd never mount to anything and 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 then all that's going on. And what's happening is it, it actually I I believe there's a well, this is my opinion on this one, but I believe a lot of autoimmune diseases are in a root cause. Not not all. I I don't want to ever make blanket things. I think we get in trouble when we make blanket. This means that always. It can get you in trouble because then, then you go from, oh, if you got that, then you had to have this. Not necessarily. And so we can uh, treat, pray wrong or put stuff on people that really shouldn't be. But many times I think that people have autoimmune. There's, there's something, there's struggle. There's, there's some real rejection maybe from their husband, their wife, uh, their children, their father, mother. Uh, there's, uh, there's been something that's caused a major rejection and um, they may not make any connection in it, but um, and so there's a kind of a self-rejecting. Um, so anyway, there are things in the natural, in relationships, that can cause sickness in the body. Uh, medically speaking, there's a whole field of, of, of a medicine now called psychoneuroimmunology that basically that's what it teaches. The way that we're thinking uh, that's affecting our feelings and the feelings are affecting our organs that are part of the immunal system that are breaking down our immunal system and we don't have a strong immunal system which means we're susceptible to disease including cancer everybody gets cancer cells i've been told they are in our body but a healthy immunal system destroys them fights them but it's when it becomes compromised and so these issues of life that where we haven't responded uh, uh, or we didn't even know how to respond can be a cause. Now, psychosomatic illness is real illness. It is, I'm trying to think of the word, but I forgot it. It's a word which means the organ itself is actually in a diseased state. But it's caused by a sickness in the soul, sickness in the emotional area, and the way we're thinking is affecting and causing the sickness in the body. It's not hypochondria, which you just got it in your head. There's really nothing wrong with you. There really is something wrong with you. And it, it is physical. Here's a physical illness. But it's due to a, another illness in the, in the area of the soul. Um, and so, so you could have an afflicting spirit. You could have a psychosomatic cause. You could find out it's ger- genetic or her, uh, hereditary. Somebody else in the family has had it passed down through the generations. So it's a third way that you can have uh, a sickness. A fourth reason, because see, you're trying to make a diagnosis. What's the cause here is uh, I was in a car accident. I got hurt in a car accident. I, I, um, I fell and broke my leg. Uh, um, in, um, I was out and I, I got chilled and uh, I mean, there's, there can be natural causes. Or I was, I was with uh, this family, and they, they all got the chicken pox, and then I didn't have it. Now I've got it. You know, there's, there's natural causes also. And, and so based upon whatever the cause is, um, you're going to pray uh, somewhat differently. If it's an afflicting spirit, you've got to deal with the spirit. If it's um, psychosomatic, you got to help. Usually they get healed when you help them forgive or bring truth to the lie that's in their mind. Uh, this is where if someone's coming to the, under conviction and you're talking to them, but the devil, they're believing a lie, a deception of the devil, you bring the truth of God's word, it helps him then to be born again because the truth displaced the lie and the lie was blocking it. It can be the same thing about healing. And um, 
uh, and, and this is the whole, the whole thing of grace is so very important here. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that can block a lot of healings is a sense of unworthiness. I'm just not good enough that God would care enough you know, to heal me. Um, so after you make the diagnostic decision, then you make the prayer selection. So you did the interview. The interview was the basis for the diagnostic decision. And sometimes you don't know. And when you don't, you say, come Holy Spirit. You, you don't even have a clue sometimes. Come Holy Spirit. But, but sometimes you do. And, uh, and you're praying. And you're, just, uh, you're speaking to the condition. So di- pray, interview, uh, diagnostic decision, prayer selection, and, it's, um, and then pray for effect. The prayer for effect is speaking to the condition. If it's a spirit, command it to leave. If it's, you know, I can already belabored this point, but if it's something that needs to be healed up of a wounding, through prayer, you're helping that to take place. If it's you're speaking to a back that the vertebra's um, blown out, uh, the disc is blown out, Lord, we command that disc to be pumped up with new squishy stuff in Jesus' name. We command that vertebra to move. We command that nerve that's irritated and inflamed to go down. Uh, Lord, uh, um, Recently prayed for a little girl who was dying, uh, nine years old, of, um, of or needed a liver. Her, she'd already rejected her mother's li- a part of her mother's liver, rejected her, it was rejecting her second liver. Uh, we started praying for her, and she was, uh, had a tube in. The packing was still there from the surgery. The tube was draining. And uh, when we prayed for her, uh, I asked her through the, and, uh, what she was feeling. And uh, she said, uh, a gelada. When in Portuguese, it means like icy cold. And the, the significance of icy cold was many times heat is the sign you're looking for. You know, it's like I feel heat and they're getting healed. But she had a rejection. Her liver, her body was rejecting the liver. And there's massive infection going on in her body. And when there's infection, there's all this heat and you're in a fever and the area is inflamed. So instead of feeling warm, she felt icy cold and um, the Lord healed her of that uh, uh, condition um, that same night I prayed for another woman who was dying who had um, uh, been 28 years old 15 year old son 11 year old baby 11 month baby um, and she was dying of cancer and they had opened her up to take out her uterus and saw that it had spread everywhere and then her bones and just turns out her whole lower abdominal area. And they just sold her back up and said, go home. There's nothing we can do. And I'll I, I mention this another time. But anyway, through dreams and things, uh, God set this thing up. And when we began to pray, she began to tell me what she was feeling. Well, at the end of it, when she got up to leave, um, so much heat had come into the bone cancer in the femurs that when she got up to walk away, her thick dress that, you know, uh, it's a pretty dress that had a thick material and then a real thin uh, material over. You could see through the thin and see this really thick material. When she got up, the butt area was as dry as could be, but the area where, where underneath her thighs, uh, where the femur bones had full of cancer that had been burnt, hurting her 24-7, there had been so much heat there, they were, were wet, that the heat had caused her legs to sweat. And all the pain that she'd been 24-7 was gone. Um, and well, when, she, when we started praying, nothing happened at first. But then she, and things, she was telling me what was happening. One of them was she felt this heat uh, coming into her abdominal area and then into her, her bone. So, so you pray for effect. Stop interview. How are you feeling? Better. How much better? You know, 50%, 100%, 70%, 10%. How much better? Oh, you know, maybe maybe 40%. Oh, well, that's good. Let's pray again. And we pray again. God, we bless what you're doing. And that's a good prayer. We bless what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. If you ask for something, if I ask you to pass the mashed potatoes at the table, and you do, I should say, if I have good etiquette, thank you. In prayer, if we ask God to do something, he does it. It just makes sense. Thank him right then. If there's improvement, it's all right to get excited. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And, and if they begin to feel something, tell them, oh, this is good. This is good. He's good. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're not manipulating. You're just helping to explain. You're midwifing. 
And it's easier when they come into the understanding you have of what, to help them to know. Um, so pray again. Now how you feel? Better. A lot better. Well, how much better? Or, oh, about 80%. Pray again. Until either they're healed or nothing else happens. How do you know when to quit? Sometimes you don't know when to quit. It's not easy sometimes. So this woman I was telling you about that had the cancer. I remembered God reminded me about this guy, 23 years old, dying of pancreatic cancer. And we prayed for him, and it came in waves. The anointing came in waves over three days. And so I mentioned, I said, you know, I've seen this happen once before where God came in waves. I usually don't sell, tell that to anybody, but because I kind of thought he's going to do it that way because she is really weak. And, uh, but we had a lot of faith. I had a real strong faith that God was going to do it because of something I'll tell you another time, uh, a dream that her friend had had that made me, know, man, this is going to happen. This got to happen, you know. So uh, I'm praying, and uh, she didn't feel anything. Ten minutes go by. We prayed again. This time she begins to hit her, she's hit her hands and her fists like this in her lap, and she begins, her thumb begins to shake, and I got encouraged by her thumb shaking. I was watching, you know, what God's doing. I said, oh, that's good. More, Lord. And then she gets shake. More, Lord. And then she's, bat- I mean, she shook like she's going to shake off that seat. I mean, she's bouncing like this. She's up like this. She's over like this. And literally, she's shaking violently. And I said, what do you feel? Nothing. <laughs> No heat, no energy, no electricity. All I'm doing is shaking and I can't stop shaking. Shaking's good, shaking's good. <laughs> and we kept praying. And I, put my, I had my hand on her back and I put my other hand about like here. And we were praying. Oh, by the way, that lasted like 15 minutes. Uh, uh, after a while, I, started, I had a friend of mine uh, clock this. Tell me how long these are lasting. There's a side of me. I just, I don't know. I'm just weird in some ways. I like to know. In uh, some ways, I'm very analytical in some ways. So I said, time it. I want to know how it's long. And then I said, and time how long it's not, you know, how, many, how long these breaks are. So there's like 12 to 15 minutes of this powerful, intense presence of God. And then it leaves totally. And she feels nothing. So I, I said, you know. Uh, you could be healed right now. But you may not be. It may be that um, God's giving you a rest. Because that's pretty intense. And you're pretty weak. And uh, uh, he may come again. There may be more. So let's just see. Lord, if there's more you want. We don't want to miss anything. If you're done and she's healed. Well, God, we just praise you for it. But if, but if it's not done yet. And there's more you want to do. We just ask it to show us. Either her, me, let us feel it, sense it. Show us. We want to work with you. And we waited. And it would be an average of two to five minutes. And then it would start again. Now that happened six times. Now 15 minutes average, being zapped, five minute break, and then a new treatment, then a break, and then another treatment, and then a break. Six times, that's an hour and a half. When she got up to leave, that's, you know, because it's past midnight, she's exhausted. I said, well, come back tomorrow night, because I don't know if it's done yet. <laughs> if it is, it, we pray. If nothing happens, we'll think it's done. But if this anointing comes on you again, we'll think it's not done. She came back the next night. The first time uh, we prayed, happened twice. And after the second time, is it. No more. So we just believe it's totally done. Well, that's a, a way of cooperating with God. It's, not, it's you trying to see what he's doing. Uh, you're speaking the word. You're believing the word. But you also believe that the manifestation of that healing can happen now. And it can be in a process of over, in her case, like an hour and a half. You say, well, I don't think God has to do it that way. God, God, God could do it just like that. There's a complete difference between what God can do and the ways of God. 
There's a huge difference between the God of the philosophers and the God of the scriptures. And even Jesus one time prayed for a blind man. And he said, what do you see? I see a man like trees walking. And he prayed a second time. Um, and, and I don't understand, you know, why sometimes it is instantaneous almost. And others, it's, it's a little bit of a process. The thing is to cooperate. Now, um, the last um, step or the last part of this process is post-prayer suggestion. What I mean by that, what are you going to say to them when you're done praying? If they're healed, you tell them. Tell people you're healed. And they say, well, I don't want to tell anybody because I may, not, I may lose it in two or three days. And then I'll be embarrassed. Tell them, That's the best way you, to lose it, not talk about it. Best way to keep it is to testify to what's happened. Well, I, I, I haven't been to the doctor. My, my pain's gone, but I haven't got it verified. I said, then don't, then test, your testimony is, I was in pain and now I'm not. You can testify to that. What if they didn't get totally healed? Thank God for what you did get tonight. Wrap it up in thanksgiving and offer it back to him and ask for more. What if nothing happened? Two things that are no-nos for me. Never tell them you didn't get healed because you didn't have enough faith. Never, ever do that. Secondly, never tell them you didn't get healed because you have sin in your life. What if both are true? You still don't tell them that because it'd be counterproductive. It's not the wisdom of God. It's not the ways of God. Is God an accuser? Who's the accuser? Satan means accuser. Accuser of the brethren. Even if something's true, to accuse them in condemnation, there's therefore now no condemnation those in Christ Jesus. What's the Holy Spirit do for us? He's our helper, our counsel, our guide. He does convict us of sin. But there's a difference between conviction of sin and condemnation. Conviction looks like that. Looks like this. That specific thing is wrong. Condemnation is you're wrong. You're no good. You're a sinner. You're unworthy. And to say, you know, you don't, you didn't get uh, healed because you got sin in your life. Now, this is what I tell the people who work with me on the teams. If you think God's showing you that, don't talk to them. Talk to Him. Say, Lord, show me which what it is, because conviction becomes precise. It's not a bludgeon; it's a scalpel. And if the Lord shows you what the sin is, then rather than saying. You didn't get healed because you are in doing this. A better way is to allow them to see that God's beginning to show you stuff. And out of his mercy, he's aware of what's going on in their life. And you begin to probe and you don't go for the heart. It'd make you look better. Man, you should have seen me. I got this word of knowledge. See, a word of wisdom is what you do with the word of knowledge. I got this word of knowledge God told me, and I told him, man, I told him, you, 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 you no good for nothing. You sinner, you, I, God just got you. I, I know what you're doing. No, you don't do it that way. And you could go right to the heart, but you don't. Let's say that the person is an... Is an um, uh, in, say it's someone that's involved in fornication. And, um, and they don't want to be in so much necessarily in fornication. Perhaps it's a young woman that was sexually abused as a kid and, and, and she's messed with her and uh, she's promiscuous. Because it usually goes promiscuity or frigidity. And it often can be promiscuity prior to marriage and frigidity after the marriage because of that. And 
so instead of saying that, you say, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I'm not sure this is the Lord, but if it is, it's God. And if it doesn't bear witness, it's just me trying to hear God. So don't come under anything that's not really of God. And by the way, that's a good way to prophesy, to give you the courage to say things you're not sure about. Now, prophesy in the sense of the good, speak to the good destiny. And so, um, do you struggle with anything in your life? Mm, yeah, I, do. I have a struggle. Uh, I, I'm just curious, but are, are, do you ever have any temptations to do things you think you shouldn't be doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything that the Lord would show you that could be that we need to pray about before we go any farther? Well, you're, you're trying to, to allow them to bring this out because to volunteer the sin rather than to be um, pronounced. Because sometimes in the making of the pronouncement, they'll deny it. Things that are really painful. I, this wasn't this way. This, um, this wasn't a sin. This was different. But it, it still is emotional. I was praying for a girl in my church one time. She's about 16 years old. Friends of the family. And uh, I knew she'd been adopted as a little girl about two. And uh, I'm praying for her for a physical problem she has. And I have this uh, uh, impression of a... Uh, a nickname. I don't remember it now, but it was a, a, a specific nickname. And I said, uh, does this name mean anything to you? And she said, no. I said, wow, it's, I just I keep hearing it in my head. It's like almost like this nickname. Did, that doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't mean anything. She says, oh, I guess I'm missing God. <laughs> um, two weeks later, she, she was a good friend of my daughter. She said, tell your dad he was right. That was my real biological father's nickname for me. But it hurt so bad because he had left. that I didn't want to go there at the time. Now, see, sometimes we can be really, really sure but when people say no, even when you feel sure, it's better to back away. And, and the fact, they know, <laughs> even though they're denying it, if you're right, they know you're right. It's, it's so, so those are two things you don't do. Is, is, um, and, and what if they don't have enough faith? You don't tell them that. Because, okay, let's say David, had, I'm praying for him. He needs healing, but he's struggling with his faith. So I say, you know, David, you didn't get healed because you didn't have enough faith. What's that going to do? I knew I didn't have enough faith. I'm like, gosh, now I know I'm not going to get healed. Even the preacher's telling me I don't have enough faith. I just solidified him in his sense of I don't have enough faith. It, that was not the thing to do. It, it actually does, it serves the opposite purpose. It's, it, it's the Satan role, accuser, accuser. Instead, if you know that's the truth. Hey, David, and not, you know, I pray for people sometimes they get healed, sometimes they don't. But I want to encourage you. I've prayed for people who didn't get healed one time. They come back later and they get healed. As a matter of fact, I feel like I'm like a doctor. And I'm going to write you out a prescription. And, and this prescription, there's, there's about four verses here I want you to m read and meditate on. And just, just meditate on Let them get in your spirit. And, um, and, and, and I've got a book over here on healing that, I, that a friend of mine gave me. It really helped me. I, I'd like for you to, there's some good stories. And, 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 I've, and I've got this great teaching by Bill Johnson over here. And I'd like for you to listen to it. And you do that this week and come back next week. And we're going to pray again. Now, I didn't tell him he didn't have enough faith. That's right. But I helped build faith. Amen. I didn't condemn him. I didn't. <laughs> Instead, I did like the Holy Spirit. I come beneath. I'm going to pick him up, lift him up, help him, strengthen him. That's the way we need to minister. By the way, this way, this way, problem's not mine, David. I'm a man of God. <laughs> I'm God's man of power for the hour. If you didn't get healed, it's not my problem. Not my lack of faith. See, often we condemn others so that we don't feel like we had anything to do with what 
perceived to be a failure. It's not our fault. We got faith. Your fault. That is not healthy. That is not loving. That's not good. Don't do that. Be a good church. Treat each other nice. Don't pick on each other. So, where are we at? Oh, 15 minutes. Right, have you been paying attention there? That, that's the right one? Okay, good, good. I, I didn't. Who needs to be healed? Just raise your hand up. Uh, wait a minute. Let, let's, who's in pain or you have something you can't do so if you got better, we would know it now. You wouldn't have to go to the doctor to prove you were better if, and, you, and you've got something wrong with you. It's okay. Now keep your hands up. Okay. Keep them up a minute. Close your eyes. Lord, I don't know which one to pick. And I'd like to pick the right one. I know that healing is possible for all of them. And we pray that all would be healed. But we just, we ask you to help us here. In the name of Jesus, begin to touch them. Let your grace come. Let your glory come. Lord, we ask the kingdom of God to come with healing and begin to even touch their bodies now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we bless them. Touch them, Lord. Okay, put your hands down. Did anybody while, you, while I was praying for you feel like you were getting better? Your pain just, you may not felt anything, but your pain began to leave or, or you felt heat or energy or anything happening? Would you? Oh, man, I could have looked so good a while ago if I hadn't chickened out. I know, I know. That's the one I felt I was supposed to pray for. And, and she's the one who raised her hand up. And I think, God, I miss it. I, I, that was, oh, I would have looked so good, Lord. I, I could have, in front of this whole church, I could have said, I know. We, if, if, if it was finished, how could we model it? Now, I'm not teasing. I, and there's another guy over here that felt something too. And, and, uh, why don't you come up and stand over here and you come over here and Chris, you pray for him and I'll pray for her. Yeah. And I'll just interview you after a while. Okay. You can watch both of us at the same time. Uh, yeah, just in case. Okay. Um, come up. To, oops, I'm, not, I'm supposed to stay in the light. <laughs> All right. What's your name? Oh, Robin. Robin. Yeah. Used to be Clark. <laughs> you gave that good name up. <laughs> One you could pronounce. Yeah, I know. Bresnahan? Bresnahan. Bresnahan. Okay, Robin. What's, what, what you have, can you talk about it? Is mm-hmm. it? What is it? I've been having a lot of asthma, and I actually have pain in my lungs. You have pain in your lungs? In my back. In your back, from the lungs? Yeah. Okay. And um, I can feel it in my breathing. My breathing's very shallow. Mm-hmm. How long you had this? I've had asthma for probably 10 or 12 years, but I've never had this pain like this up until about two months ago. So you've been in this pain for two months. You've had asthma for 10 or 12 years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does the doctors have any idea what's causing the pain? Asthma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any, okay. Um, is it running your family? Is there anything that would have happened in your life traumatically that that happened within a year before your asthma started? Maybe a year or two before your asthma started? Yes. 
That may not be something we'd want to talk about right here, though, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. He knows, you know. I have an idea. So, um, all right. Uh, if you were sinned against or there's anybody hurt you in any way, have you forgiven them? Over and over. Oh, well, that's good because uh, un- until we reach a point where it doesn't have that powerful memory that causes a lot of feeling, we just need to keep specifically, though. One of the things I found out from a psychiatrist, uh, uh, not a psychiatrist, uh, he was a, a rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis specialist, that if he could get people to confess or forgive specifically by name, person who did something to them and specifically deal with what they did or multiple things that they did specifically if he could get them to do that often the rheumatoid arthritis disease stopped Mm -hmm. if they just prayed a general prayer of of, I forgive so and so for hurting me it had almost no effect on stopping the disease and so it's important in be forgiveness of being very specific and have you done that mm-hmm. okay all right so god is touching you does it hurt in your left side more than the right i mean your yeah yeah left side more than the right i can't really tell right now are you in pain right now do you have pain right there yes is that a, a more of a localized spot than mm-hmm. other places mm-hmm. right there mm-hmm. you know why I put this right here because I started feeling it mm-hmm. so if that means God's really working with us on this Thank you, Lord. the fact that he, I, I really did I seriously I was thinking you're the one I'm supposed to pray for but I was afraid I might be missing it because this just started lately And okay now I want you to close your eyes and I don't want you to pray while I'm praying for you because it's hard to receive when you're trying to give. I know you've prayed about this. And I believe today's the day to receive the healing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless Robin. In Jesus' name. I ask you to come. Let your kingdom come. Let your healing power come in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless her lungs. Father, we command the pain in the lung to leave in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the authority of his name, I command the pain in the lungs to leave. And I bless the lungs in in any irritation, inflammation. In Jesus' name, your healing virtue to flow there and heal it. In the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Now, Ram, if you feel anything while I'm praying, I want you to tell me. If it gets better, worse, intensifies, moves, feel heat, coolness, anything. This side's good. This side's good? (laughs) No, this side's still got a little... Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your healing. We pray, Lord, that you heal not just the pain, but heal Robin of the asthma too. In the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you to go back and and just touch every aspect, even our thoughts, our memories. Uh, In Jesus' name. Break off asthma. I command the pain. That's in the pectoral muscles in Jesus' name and coming out of the lungs in Jesus' name to leave. And I command all the pain in the back to leave in Jesus' name. And what did you just feel about five seconds ago? Nothing that I was aware of. I saw you did like that. What's happening? I 
just feel peace. I still feel <laughs> pain there. Is it the same? A little. No, it's better. A little better? Ten um, percent better? Twenty? Sixty, seventy percent better. Sixty, seventy percent better? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your presence. Bless what you're doing in Jesus' name. Command it to leave in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, your presence is here. Thank you, Lord, for just touching her. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, getting pain in the back still? Where, if you do? A little bit where your hand is. Where my hand is. Mm-hmm. All right. This hand? Mm-hmm. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we command all that pain to leave. We thank you that you're doing this, Lord. This is so much fun to get to work with you and see you do this stuff. It's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. We just ask you to complete what you've started here in the name of Jesus. My wheezing's gone. Good. That's really good. Thank you, Lord. What about this guy in pain here left? On the back. Mm-hmm. What about here? All gone? It's not in the front. It's in the back. In like the right back. There. Over here? Mm-hmm. What about here? Is that gone? Yeah. In Jesus' name, command, I command it to leave. Now, did that, did, was it hurting here earlier or did it move there? It was hurting here earlier. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, just complete. It did move more. Mm-hmm. Inside. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray a little bit because I was thinking of something. I, won't, I didn't want to. Anyway, there's this guy I prayed for in, in uh, Kentucky. He had been disabled. No, I was in Norway. 23 years, I told the story. Um, 23 years he'd been disabled from severe lung problems, severe pain in his lungs. And I had three Methodist seminarians with me, and I was praying, and I said, in Jesus' name. When I said in Jesus' name, his eyes opened up. He had this excruciating pain. Obviously, it was a spirit, so I, I said, in Jesus' name, I break the power and cancel the assignment, command you to leave. And he was healed, and he had been on disability for 23 years. I talked to the pastor five years later and never had a lung problem. It was an afflicting spirit in his case. Um, Lord, I think there could be a little bit of a uh, spirit involvement been. here. There has been generational sin. Yeah. Okay. Sin, so. Okay. Well, Lord, we break the power of any spirit of affliction and cancel its assignment in the authority of Jesus' name Spirit of affliction, I command you not to move to another area of Robin's body, but to just lift off now. In Jesus' name, I break your power and cancel your assignment in the authority of Jesus' name. In the authority of Jesus' name. Wow. More, Lord. I pray for peace and no fear. I pray that the cross of Jesus would be placed between you and the sins of the ancestors in your family line in Jesus' name. And all the judgment would be taken to the cross and you'd not bear any of it in Jesus' name. I bless you. Command all pain to leave. I pray a sense of well-being. Peace, no fear, peace. More, Lord. Now what? I almost hate to interrupt. Look like you're enjoying it. <laughs> I am. <laughs> just a teeny bit. It's like just a teeny, teeny bit. Put your finger where the teeny bit is. In Jesus' name. Lord, for the glory of Jesus' name. You wanted, Jesus said he wanted you to get glory. You wanted him to get glory. And one of the ways of getting that glory was by being fruitful and signs and wonders in John 15. In Jesus' name, I bless this area. Command sickness to leave. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All pain, leave. In the name of Jesus. All right, just come on up. On your breath. In Jesus' name. It's on its way out. It's moving up. On your breath. Just, just, in Jesus' name.
all that pain, commanded to leave. Uh, that spirit of affliction gone, in Jesus' name. All right? Thank you, Lord. Gone? Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Lord. Now, tell people what he's done, what he's done for you. And post-prayer suggestion. When somebody gets healed and it was connected in some way to an afflicting spirit, you need to know sometimes they'll try to come back. Mm -hmm. If you don't know that, you think, oh, oh, I'm losing my healing. And you move from faith into doubt and there's no resistance and it can come back. But you have the same authority as a believer, your believer. You have the same authority as I do. So if it tries to come back, you speak to it just as we did. In the authority of Jesus' name, I will not receive you. Break your power. Leave. It'll find out it can't, that you know your authority, and it'll go bother somebody else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if you don't tell somebody that, and they had something connected to an afflicting spirit, and they don't know that, when it begins to come back, they move into fear, and the, instead of resisting, and think they don't see, they'll think, "Oh, I'm losing my healing." But if you've been, if you know what this issue is, you know, I'm not losing my healing. That the enemy is trying to bring sickness back. I'm resisting it. And so you stand in faith rather than uh, in fear. Was that helpful? Yes. All right. So sometimes it's one thing to talk about. It's another thing just let's just do it. And uh, let's see what's going on over here. What's happening? You want... well, Jim, uh, Jim had a, it was a. Wait a minute. How do we get this? Oh, it's on. It is on? Uh, Jim had a basketball injury like, 18 months ago, and uh, there's been some like calcium buildup. There's been some calcium buildup in uh, in his uh, in his in his right shoulder over here. So we've just been praying a little bit, and we saw like what was it like 35, 40 percent? Like I think you were saying 40. Uh, just you know, praying, blessing of what God was doing. He started to feel heat come up his uh, his hands on on both arms. And uh, so we just started uh, just praying and blessing what God was doing and praying for healing there. And then uh, we talked a little bit more. You know, we saw a measure of healing there. And we had to pray a few times, right? And then we started to see that. And then, um, you know, I re-interviewed him. We talked a little bit more. And it turns out uh, Jim and and, and you're saying you and your wife both, you know, start to enter into a healing ministry. And since then... uh, it's just they've come under some attack in their family. You had a blood clot that got healed, you know, praise God. But this, this shoulder thing happened right after they, they came into that ministry. So we've been praying uh, since we, you know, re-interviewed him, found out, chose a different kind of prayer. So we started uh, praying some more, and you've seen a little bit improvement since then. But we're not done. God's not done. He's starting to feel some heat and some warmth happen on that shoulder. So we're just going to keep praying a little bit more. Uh...